Hello class, this is Dr. Fenton. In this video, we're going to cover the material in Chapter 1 of Financial Accounting. Now to do this, we're going to go page by page through the ebook that's in Connect. And if you have the hardbound edition of the book, this is the exact same thing. In fact, as we go through the ebook edition of Connect, then we're going to see that the page numbers will show up, and these page numbers show up the same as in your textbook. So everything, everything's the same whether you're using the ebook or the hardbound textbook. First, I'll show you how to find the ebook and connect, then we'll get started with the chapter material. So let me bring up this. This should be similar to what you have in your connect account. Uh, I'm showing it as a student view, uh, so hopefully you're seeing something similar to this. What you need to do is find this symbol down here, the Spiceland Financial Accounting 5th Edition book, click on it, and that'll open up a new window. And here it comes. There we go. And this is the very first uh, page inside the cover of the book. So we don't need to go through all these pages. So the easiest thing to do is go to this little symbol here for table of contents. Scroll down a little bit and you'll see chapter one. Click on chapter one and that'll expand. And then let's go to chapter one. So here's the chapter one of the financial accounting book. And you can read the learning objectives on your own, but you'll see that we're going to cover, you know, financial accounting, uh, what it means, what it does, and talk a little bit about the numbers in this first chapter. So we can scroll, as you scroll back up, you know, as you scroll down, this, this window up here disappears. Scroll back up and, and it pops up. So click this arrow to the next page, and this starts the actual material within the chapter. So let's scroll down a little bit, and as many people say, you know, accounting is the language of business. No matter what job you have in the business arena, you will be working with accounting numbers. The accountants will be preparing the numbers for other people to use for decision-making purposes. These other people include managers, vice presidents, CEO, even people outside the company like creditors and investors. So going up here, again, uh, accounting is a system of maintaining records of a company's operations and communicating that information to decision makers. Come down a little bit, and these are a, a variety of, of people and authorities that, that need the numbers. Like I said earlier, investors, creditors, customers, suppliers, managers, even the tax authorities. So there are a lot of uh, interested parties who depend on the numbers coming out of the company. Make sure you go back and read the chapter yourself. I'm, I'm skipping over these things that are you know, fairly uh, self-apparent, so make sure you read it yourself. And let's go down to, uh, I guess we're through on here. Let's go to the next page. Let's look at an example coming up. This example in your chapter has an Eagle Soccer Academy starting a new business. It starts on December 1st. We'll see that in a few minutes. And what they need to do is to raise money to, you know, into the business. The business can then get started. Now, this is going to be in the form of a, a corporation. And so we're going to see that we're going to have stock being sold to the investors. So the company here is going to sell 1,000 shares of stock for $25 each and receive $25,000 of investors. This $25,000 from investors is going to get most of what we need for the business. In the reading up here, it says we need $35,000 to get the business started. So we're going to sell stock and receive $25,000 from the investors. And these investors will be stockholders, and therefore, they will be the owners of the company. So we do that, and then we uh, raise the remaining cash by borrowing some money from the bank. So the bank's going to be our creditor. We borrow $10,000. So at this point, we have $35,000 of cash in the business. And now what we're going to do, the first transaction is going to take $24,000 of the cash we have and buy some equipment. And that's going to leave us $11,000 cash that we can use for the future. So we're taking $35,000 cash, using twenty four dollars of it. So now after that transaction, we have $11,000 cash left, and we have equipment that cost us $24,000. So there's the same total of $35,000. These resources in total have not changed. 
we're going to see in just a few minutes that resources are called assets. So our total assets before this transaction were 35,000 that was just cash, cash of 35. Now if we take $24,000 of the cash and buy equipment, then we're trading one asset for another one. We're trading $24,000 in cash for equipment worth $24,000. The total resources or total assets will stay the same. Scroll down a little bit more. We have creditors. We owe the bank $10,000. And the investors we're showing here in the form of common stock have put $25,000 into the business. So our resources are $35,000 and our claims to resources $35,000. Now, personally, I don't like the term claims to resources. That's hard to, to grasp sometimes. But this will be the right side of the balance sheet we're going to see in a few minutes. And we're going to show that we have liabilities of $10,000 and we have equity of $25,000. Now, claims, I can see why they say this because, you know, creditors, you do owe them the money. You do owe them $10,000. But it's not like they have you know, a specific claim on a specific asset in the company. Now they would if we took out a mortgage and there was collateral, you know, for, for the loan, but we haven't gotten there yet. That's, that's a future chapter. Go down a little bit more. Make sure you read through here. This talks about corporations and you're going to see that a corporation is a separate legal entity from its owners. The reason people incorporate businesses, you know, one of the main reasons is for limited liability and this is for the shareholders. This protects the shareholders. So if the transactions are handled correctly, I mean legally correctly, then the shareholders, you know, the stockholders, should not be personally liable for what happens in the company. So hopefully that's the case. So limited liability, not for the corporation, but for the owners of the corporation who are the stockholders. There are a couple other forms of businesses. One is sole proprietorship. This is a one person owner of the business, a non-incorporated one owner of the business. A partnership, as you're well aware, I'm sure, has at least two or more uh, persons. You can have like thousands of partners, but this is a non-incorporated business with at least two owners. Uh, let's look at here. Okay, now we're getting into some more accounting uh, definitions here. We talked about assets a minute ago and those are the resources of the company. So far we only have two, cash and equipment. But as we get in the future chapters we're going to have cash, accounts receivable, inventory, some prepaid assets, equipment, land, and so forth. So quite a few different kinds of assets. Liabilities, anything we owe to someone else is a liability. The 10000 to the bank, or we could owe some utilities, we could owe some taxes, we could owe our um, uh, employees some money, those would be liabilities. And the stockholders' equity represents the owner's investment in the company and also represents, uh, we're going to see in a minute, something called retained earnings, leftover profits that have been retained in the business. So three main areas, assets, liabilities, and stockholders' equity. Here is a an equation you need to memorize because we're going to use this throughout this course and really throughout the next course. The basic accounting equation says assets equal liabilities plus stockholders equity. This is very important. This equation always must hold true. It holds true in general when you look at total assets and liabilities and equity or each individual transaction we're going to talk about. Every transaction itself will balance in the same manner. So at all times, for every transaction, after every transaction, we enter into the records. This, this equation must hold true. If it doesn't, we have an error someplace. You have to go find the error and get it corrected. But your assets must always equal your liabilities plus stockholders' equity. Now, revenues... We're going to talk about revenues throughout the course. Revenues, as you probably already know, that's where a company uh, provides services or goods to customers. And when the customers pay the store or agree to pay the store, that's a revenue. Expenses, any cost of running the business. Salaries, 
rent, utilities, taxes, insurance. We're going to have a variety of expenses. Now net income, we're going to see this quite a bit. Net income is the difference between revenues and expenses. So take revenue minus the expenses, that is net income. Now, if it happens where your expenses exceed your revenues, we're going to have a net loss. Okay, So it's either a net income for the period or a net loss for the period. Dividends are a return of some of the profits to the owners. These are usually in the form of cash, but it could be in the form of, of stock or other assets. But in this course, we're just going to deal with cash. So dividends are cash payments to the owners, to the stockholders, from part of the profits. Dividends are not expenses. Sometimes people try to put this in the income statement as an expense, but dividends are not expenses. Once you review this when you get a chance, uh, they got the solutions right there for you, but make sure you know the definitions of these terms. And uh, keep going. Let's see what else we have. That's it here, so let's go to the next section. Financial statements. We will have four basic financial statements. And in this course, for the major part of this course, we're going to cover the first three. The income statement, the statement of stockholders' equity, and the balance sheet. We are going to just mention the statement of cash flows in this chapter, but we have an entire chapter later on that covers nothing but the statement of cash flows. So we're going to leave the detail to that last statement for a future chapter. The income statement is just simply revenues minus expenses equals net income. That's what the income statement shows. It does not get any more complicated than that, even though by the time you get to chapters 4 and 5, we're going to have more detailed income statements. But this always holds true. The income statement shows revenues minus expenses. And here's an example of one. Okay. First, let's look at the title. Whenever you prepare a statement, always show the company name at the beginning, then the name of the statement, income statement in this case, and for the income statement and the uh, statement of stockholders' equity, then you show it for the time period involved. So remember, this company started December 1st, and we've gone one month. So we're at December 31st. So what you write down here is for the month ended December 31st, you know, 2021. Now, if this had been for the whole year, you would write for the year ended December 31st. But remember, this company started December 1st. We only have gone one month, and we're going to show the results of what happened during that one month period. So revenues, they told us that they had service revenue of $7,200. So we dropped that in. And then they told us that we had rent expense, supplies, salaries, and the other expenses, list those, and get the total of $6,000 in expenses. Now what you'll do is take revenues minus total expenses to get net income. Now these numbers are just given to us in this chapter. In chapter 2, they're going to talk more about these numbers, and we're going to see how we, we come up with these numbers by having revenue, by incurring expenses, and how to get those recorded. We just take these numbers as given to us at this point. Let's scroll down. Uh, we've talked about this, and um, you know, just you can look at these decision points. How can I tell if a company is profitable? You look at the income statement, and so if revenue exceeds expenses, a company has net income and is profitable. You know, if your expenses exceed your revenues, you have a net loss, so you are not profitable. The statement of stockholders equity, this is sort of a bridge statement between the income statement and the balance sheet. This shows you how each account in the stockholders equity section changed during the period. So since this was a brand new company that formed on December 1st, then right at December 1st, we had zero in the uh, common stock account and zero in retained earnings. Now retained earnings is an account that will include net income and you subtract dividends. So let's come back to this in a minute. Our common stock account, if you remember, our very first transaction was to sell stock to the stockholders. So that's where the common stock account increased $25,000, and that's the ending balance. Retained earnings started at zero. We had not had any earnings in the past. Our net income was $1,200. You drop this in. Dividends we pay out, remember dividends are not expenses, 
but they do show up here in the statement of stockholders' equity, and it's a reduction of retained earnings. So at the end of this uh, month-long period, we have $1,000 in the retained earnings account. That is the net income minus the dividends, so $1,000. This third column is just bringing these totals across. That's all it is. So we have total stockholders' equity of $26,000 that includes what the owners have put in and the profits that we've made through net income that we have retained. We had total profits of $1,200, but we paid out to the stockholders $200. So these are the profits we've retained in the business, so retained earnings. Scroll down a little bit more, and let's look at the balance sheet. And the balance sheet is going to, going to follow this equation, our basic accounting equation. So here's the balance sheet. Now look at the title to the statement. Again, list the company name, the name of the statement, balance sheet. And for the balance sheet, we only put one date, December 31st. This is not like the income statement, and I didn't cover this for the uh, statement of stockholders' equity, but it's the same thing you know, for the month ended. But for the balance sheet, it's one date. Because you want to see at the end of this day, December 31st, what account balances do you have? So at the end of December, we have $6,900 in cash. We have accounts receivable where customers owe us money, supplies and equipment, and other assets. Here are the liabilities we have. Scroll down a little bit, and we can see here's the common stock and the retained earnings. So total assets of $40,000 and total liabilities and stockholders' equity equal 40. Now, again, these numbers will uh, be explained more fully in Chapter 2, but just you know, take these as given. These are the assets we have at the end of the year. These are the liabilities, quite a few of those. And then you can see the balance sheet still balances because total assets must always equal total liabilities and stock horse equity. And let's look down through here. Statement of cash flows. Just know that this is the fourth statement. There are three areas, operating, cash flows, investing, and financing. And this cash flow statement just shows you where, where your cash came from during the year and where it went and how much you have at the end of the year. That's all you need to know for the first exam about the statement of cash flows. Here's the statement. Don't worry about it. Let's keep going down. And right here, this shows you how the, how the statements tie together. Always prepare the income statement first, always, because you need the net income figure to be able to complete the statement of stockholders' equity as it comes in here. So the income statement first, you need this number to complete this statement, then you get these ending balances that you need for the balance sheet because this total will come into this balance sheet. Now what they did in this example, they collapsed the balance sheet down quite a bit just to squeeze it all in here. But you need to complete the stockholders' equity statement second, so you'll have the ending stockholders' equity account balances to complete and to balance balance sheet. Okay, I think that's it. Same statements all over again. Are they, oh, this is another example. So, um, yeah, going up here, you can take this, work through the numbers as another example, and prepare the statements, and this should be what you come up with as solutions. All right, so we're down here. Let's go to the next page. <clears throat> Let's see, it just talks about making decisions. Just read through this yourself. It talks about ethical issues related to accounting because you want the accounting numbers presented fairly. I'm going through here. Nothing to, for me to discuss. Now, something else you need to know here is that the rules that we need to know on how to record the entries into the accounting system, uh, we, we find those from a set of principles called Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. And yes, this is shortened to GAAP, G-A-A-P, and we do say GAAP as accountants. So Generally Accepted Accounting Principles, these are the, the, the guiding rules and regulations that show us how to enter numbers into the financial statements. And who sets these rules? It's the Financial Accounting Standards Board. And some people call this FASB. Some of us call, just call it FASB. So that's, you know, the FASB is the you know, Financial Accounting Standards Board. 
For the international accounting standards, we have the IASB. And let's see what else. A little bit of history. Auditors, yes. Uh, each company traded on the stock exchanges um, must be audited by an outside independent CPA firm. You know, those are the auditors coming in. And these outside auditors will come in, review a selected number of transactions, and then they will express an opinion on the financial statements. And what they do will, will tell the public, and they are certified public accountants, so CPAs. They will say, based on our work that we've done, uh, the company does use generally accepted accounting principles. We followed auditing standards, and the, the numbers in the financial statements fairly present the financial position of the company. If it doesn't, then the auditors and the, and the company have to work out the numbers to make sure the numbers are correct. But the outside auditors really are there to protect the public. Okay, so certified public accountants, outside auditors that come into a company once a year or more frequently and then re review the entries and make a, an opinion on the statements. Okay, so there's one for Dick Sporting Goods. Report of Independent Auditors, and and you can read and see what this one says. Yeah, it's like the second paragraph. In our opinion, such consolidated financial statements present fairly, in all material respects, the financial position of Dick Sporting Goods and subsidiaries as of, and they give us the dates. Okay. Read th through the rest of this yourself. It talks about some public laws that were passed to uh, oversee the accounting profession. Let's go to the next section. Careers in accounting. Now, in case you're thinking about being an accounting major, and I highly recommend it if you, if you like this, is that there are a variety of jobs out there. The first one would be in public accounting. We talked about the certified public accounting firms. That's what this is. So you can become a CPA and be an auditor. You could be a, a tax advisor, tax planner, a business consultant, a forensic accountant, just a variety of jobs out there in public accounting. You can go with one of the international CPA firms, Deloitte, Ernst & Young, PricewaterhouseCoopers, that's my old firm, and KPMG. Uh, or you can go with you know a medium-sized company comp or, or one office company. So you know large, medium, small companies you can go with. So there are a lot of opportunities in public accounting itself. But that's not the only place. Well, private accounting. You can go work for industry. Like in the Cincinnati area, you can work for Procter & Gamble. You know, a variety of companies, Kroger, and so forth. You know, each medium-sized company and larger really needs its own accountant. Or, or accountants, you know, plural. So uh, a lot of jobs, you can go straight into these companies. Law enforcement. Yes, the FBI hires a lot of accountants. Even the CIA. They need to... to have people on staff who understand numbers so they can build a case of white-collar crime if they feel like they have you know, someone who's committing fraud. Let's see, you can work for the tax auditors also, the IRS or the Kentucky or Ohio Department of Revenues. Okay, uh, so you can look at this on your own, the rest of it. Conceptual framework, appendix, don't worry about it. If you have more background, you're not going to be tested over the conceptual framework. So that's it. One more. And this gets into highlights. Uh, a good place to review. Quick little page here to review. Learning objectives again. Take a look at that. And then glossary. So you can go through here and you know find um, um, the definition for all these terms. Next section, self-study questions. These are always good to review at the end of the chapter. You know, take this multiple choice set of questions. Uh, looks like they jumped from 6 to 11. I'm not sure what happened there. Take those, and they'll have the, the answers in the chapter for you. Someplace they'll tell you where the... Sorry for all the scrolling. Uh, oh, you can click here to show, get, look at the answer. That's right, yeah. Click there, and the answer is B. Okay, that's where the answers are. In your book, you'll have a certain page that'll have the answers on them. What else do we have here? 
So let's scroll back up and next section. Review questions. You make sure you know the answers to all these. Then we get into the end of chapter material like assignments, brief exercises. And so the exercises themselves will show up on the next section. Here are the exercises. Now these brief exercises, exercises and problems, this will be your homework. So your online connect homework will come from these and you'll see the exact same problem, but you'll have different numbers. So everyone will have a different set of numbers to work. So if it asks you to prepare an income statement or uh, yes, income statement, statement equity and balance sheet. On your homework, you'll have something like this assigned, but you'll have different numbers. Everything else is the same, you have different numbers. So that's about it for, uh, for this chapter. Again, um, a lot of material in the first chapter thrown at you. Um, go back and read the chapter, chapter yourself. This video is not a substitute for, for not reading the chapter. Read it word for word, follow all the examples through, and come back to the video if you need to. But you know, make sure you do your work that you're supposed to and read the chapter yourself. All right, that's it for this chapter, and good luck with your studies.